I'm Delta Work, and it's time for one more very scary Delta, where it's been Halloween all month long. Madame LaQueer is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Are you a ghoulita like me? Do you want to suck blood like me? Do you wear a sexy nun costume just like me? Do you wear hypnotique at Halloween like me? Do you drink green jello shots like me? Do you love fun size candy like me? Well, if you do, then you must be very scary, Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Scary Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Scary Delta. Very Scary Delta is for the woman who once went to a hell house, and it was called Home Goods. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Scary Delta. Ghoul off, Delta. Here at Very Scary Delta, we are looking towards a very warm autumn. Autumn is a time when we gather, when we join in friendship and camaraderie. And we don't always do that at home. We do that very often at a restaurant. And I think it is high time that restaurants start incorporating something new, something innovative, something that we've all needed. Restaurants need to begin having a display outside of their store, outside of their front, at the very top, that says the temperature inside the dining room, that says whether or not they have working restrooms, and says whether or not they have tables or booths or both tables and booths. And these can be done in just universal symbols, right? When I was coming up uh, as a kid, there was every bank had the time and temperature outside. And so that would say what time it was during the day, and what the temperature was in Fahrenheit. I think restaurants need that. I am tired of going to some of my favorite restaurants, thinking, ooh, I'm going to have the best meal. I've been looking forward to this all week. It's my day off. It's going to be great. We're going to beat the crowds. And I get there, and it's boiling hot. If I had known that in advance... I wouldn't have gone there. I wouldn't have called friends and said, hey, let's meet at Joe's and have lunch and then get there and realize I cannot have my Reuben sandwich. It is too hot in here. I cannot have a Diet Coke. It is too hot in here. Um, This whole idea is something that uh, in the eyes of many people might deter people from going to that restaurant. But I tell you what, I could be harsher. I could be a cruel mistress and say that what else you should include in this whole thing is how long the wait is going to be to be seated. But I'm not asking for that. I don't want I don't want I don't want the restaurants to go without business, but I think that it should be known. If your menu is online, um, you should be able to tell people it is a cool temperature in here. Nobody wants to eat in a restaurant that's 86 degrees nobody, uh, well, I don't really care about everybody else. I care about me. (laughs) I don't want to go into a restaurant and jam myself into a booth like baby Huey. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I want to sit down and be comfortable and luxuriate. I want the table where my chair is with my back against the wall. You know, in my former life, I was a double agent. I like to know where my exits are, right? I need to know what I need to pull out my Glock. I want to know what's going on, what's happening around me. And I can't do that crammed up in a booth. How am I supposed to get out? I think that these restaurants really owe it to us to let us know exactly what we're getting into. And I think this could be branded. I think this is a place where um, Yelp could jump in. You know, people can go on Yelp and write the shittiest review about a place. You never see... An overwhelming amount of people writing a review on Yelp that's positive. You never really get that. Or you never really get people saying on Yelp, like, "Mm, I realize it was a little bit busy today, so my soup was kind of warm, but I get it. It was the lunch rush. No, people go in there to terrorize and to say how horrifying everything is. So if they can go in there and shit all over everybody, the least that Yelp could do is provide something that says, This is the average temperature of the dining room 
right now if you were to go there. And these places should report that to Yelp. This is how many tables are available in this place. This is how many booths are available. I have a favorite restaurant I go to. It's in Cerritos. It's called Wood Ranch. I love it. They have one table there that is a half table, half booth. And we love it because we get sort of the intimacy of the booth. But I'm not sitting with my fucking gut on top of the appetizers. Can we just be honest? Like, you see me, right? You know what I look like. If you work in a restaurant, why would you not say when someone walks in, did you have a preference for a table or a booth? That sets the tone for everyone to go, I've opened this up because I'm aware based on other people who have been here. And some people that are the size of the house, guess what? They want to jump inside of a booth and God bless them. If you want to go in there and knock the wall out like Mr. Kool-Aid, fucking go for it. I don't want to. I want to feel comfortable. I don't want to be on top of anything. That's me. And I think we can alleviate all of those questions. It no longer becomes a human one-on-one -on -one job. It's completely separate. It's a fact. It's written outside. We have tables. It's like a, a little a little symbol of a table and a little symbol of the same table with a line on the side. Maybe that means booth. I don't know. We can figure this out later. Uh, what the you know exact uh, images look like, and I have no problem being part of that team that approves what these look like. But every restaurant has to have the same, not just like their own like logoed mom. Like it's not going to look like that, and then turn it upside down, and it's wow or vice versa. Like it's not going to be that. It's going to be the same for everyone, kind of like those those gold seals that say best of the Southland or um, the things that say, I, I don't know, this is a like a gold star restaurant. They all look the same. You can't have your own. That way, when people are driving by, they look at the logo of the restaurant and they go, oh, there it is. There's my favorite uh, restaurant, uh, uh, Gray Sweatpants Jumping Jack. That's the name of the restaurant. And then you go, oh, there's, a, oh, I don't want to stop at that one. It's, it's 96 degrees inside. But the one up the street, well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, 70. That's where I want to eat. That's where I'm comfortable. That's where I'm not going to vomit. That's where the temperature is going to be so nice. It doesn't cause me to feel like the bubble guts. And then I'm going to shit right by the salad bar. You know, these things, this will help everybody all the way around. When you eat in a cool environment or... Maybe it's wintertime and it's raining. We don't know. It could be raining in July. You know, this, this ball that we call Earth is on fire. It is hot one day. It's cold the next day. We don't know what's coming at us, but we can control the air conditioning. We can control the heat, right? You need to display what the environment is going to be like inside the restaurant. I just, I think it's real. I don't think it's fucked up. I don't think it's a reach. I don't think it's a weird expectation. I know I complain about weird shit and, and fry the small fish. I feel like this is a big fish. I feel like this is a big old fat sea bass. I feel like this is a huge one. And I think it's really easy. And I think if restaurants don't want to participate, well, then I don't know what. You don't get to be on Yelp or something. Somewhere, somehow... There's going to be a reason. And I know people are going to say, well, gosh, I mean, if you put that out there, then people are, it's not going to be fair because then the, the restaurant might lose business. Well, why would the restaurant want to lure people in and have them like come in and have a bad experience? If your experience is so sickening and you're so fierce and you want people to come in, tell us outside why we should come in. Put a sign out there that says, come in here and enjoy a wedge salad. It's 70 degrees inside. Put a sign up there that says, like, uh, fatties can come in here because we have room. Like, say something. I'm giving up on you. Say something. I'm giving up on you. Mark? When I go to Wood Ranch, I like to have the two meat combo. And I like chicken breast and I like pulled pork, but I don't want any of the sauce on, on the pulled pork. I want that on the side. And I like to have a loaded baked potato with that and a corn on the cob. And um, I know I, it seems like when that plate comes, like everything is so enormous. But again, I apply my Olive Garden principle to it because we always order chips and salsa there. And um, they have thin chips and they're long. And then the salsa, like, let's be honest, there's no, there's, it's not really a salsa. It's just like a tomato sauce with a little onion powder in it. But it's good. I love it. 
and they bring you rolls, the, the buttered garlic rolls. And then I also order a house salad. So once I eat my house salad, right, like a dinner salad portion, and I eat chips and rolls, I really just kind of pick at the rest. And I'm like, can I get a box? Can I get a box? And then I take it home and baby, I put it in the refrigerator and then I forget that I have leftovers until they're rotten. So I waste all that money. But I will tell you this. If you ever go to Wood Ranch, there are a few around. Um, the trick is um, you have an amazing meal at lunch, right? You can get that lunch portion and it's it's plenty. I mean, if I'm telling you it's plenty, I'm telling you it's plenty. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a connoisseur, which is a, a, a nicer word for picky or bitchy or a complainer. Um, but if you get the, the dinner portion, ooh, so the dinner portion is... If you say, I want chicken breast, it's two breasts. So say you were like, oh, I want the two meat combo and I want it um, both. I want both proteins to be chicken. You're getting four chicken breasts on the plate that are like that. So, dude, it's it's plenty like it, it. They will they will get you together. I like their brisket. It's cute. But I like brisket burnt ends at Lucille's better. I, there's there's different things that I like at each location. And Lucille's is like a number one for me. The only reason that um, Wood Ranch kind of jumps down on that is like it, the, the, the people that go do kind of think there's like a little bit bougie sometimes. Like it's a little bit like, I think Wood Ranch is trying to be like Texas barbecue. Whereas um, Lucille's is just trying to be like Southern specialties. Right. So they go across the board. I like both of them. I have a place for both of them. I will say if I'm in the parking lot, for sure, just driving through a parking lot from where there's for sure driving through a parking lot where there's a wood ranch, like the payoff in just the smell alone will make you want to go in there. You don't always smell that uh, that barbecue or that smoker outside of Lucille's. It's amazing inside, but you don't always smell it outside, but you definitely smell it outside of Wood Ranch and it's everything. Ooh, I'm ready for lunch. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. I want to tell you about something very Delta. It's hard to know where to start with supplements and who to trust, but AG1 makes that so much easier. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that offers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. I started drinking AG1 not long ago and I immediately felt results. I ask a lot out of this body and I put these bones through it. And I'm telling you right now, it feels like I'm doing something good for my body. Like I'm giving my body the nutrition it craves. I didn't know where to start and I thought I would just start here. And I just know I'm putting a foot in the right direction. AG1 replaces your multivitamin probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. Why take a bunch of things when you can do just one scoop of powder, mix it in water, do that once a day, you're done. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash Delta. That's drinkag1.com slash Delta. Check it out. She's here. She's LaQueer. She's Madame LaQueer. And she ain't gonna disappear. Hi. Hey, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. How are you? I'm doing great. You look absolutely stunning. Um, I I feel like um I, I I whenever I tell you this, I always feel like um like when you pay someone a compliment, it's you don't want them to think that you're placating them or you're like bullshitting them. You have my favorite face from drag race. I just think I remember when we first met, I was like, you are just so stunning, and you're someone who um you can wear simple makeup or you can wear extravagant makeup, but you just know your face. Have you always loved doing makeup? Oh, I've always loved painting my face. And and and, and this is the thing, and, and, and thank you for that. Usually in, in, in 
me as a as a non drag persona, I'd be like, I I would not believe the compliment. But I I coming for you, I appreciate it oh. and I and I, and and thank you. And I I love to paint. Like ever since I started doing drag, like I saw my face as a big canvas. Like I I didn't start it doing pretty makeup. Like when I started doing drag, I started doing like double eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Like I would pretty much put every single color on the cheap eyeshadow palette on my face mm -hmm. one corner orange green blue you know so i i would yeah I, I wasn't particularly going ever for pretty but the pretty just happened like it it, it it just happens to come by you know the the, the glam part of the makeup sure it's just it came later in my in my drag career versus mm -hmm. you know the extravagant edgy you know out of this lines <laughs> right kind of makeup it just sort of evolved yes yeah i mean but you're like a creative a you're a creative person all the way around you love creative hairstyles um something that i think separates you from a lot of people is that you are very creative when it comes to your performance mixes and you really put yourself fully into those yes that one yeah that that's 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 one of my biggest things when i when it when it was in drag for example back in puerto rico it used to be the go-to queen for all pageant mixes like okay. the, they would be days in the pageant where all talent mixes were all made by, made by me wow so like I, I i did a, a continent mixes for like for like continental like the word got out and i started traveling out you know i you know doing mixes for national pageants fashion shows and and for a while i was i was i was actually making a little bit more money and make and making mixes than i did with drag mm -hmm. so and and mixes for some time actually became my main thing mm -hmm. but you know eventually you know the technology advances and we have programs that do this for free everybody can you know, do their mixes so that part I'm not doing anymore, mm -hmm. like for other people. But at least for me, I kept that that skill that skill set, and I just you know take it to town. Yeah, I feel like as as we progress, you know, uh, as we progress, once upon a time you could only get jewelry from a, a handful of people. Now you can get jewelry a lot of places. So when you say mixes, I do think there are people that can connect a couple of songs together, and they have the technology for that. You can do that on your phone. But you really will incorporate, um, which is what a lot of people love to do, movies, dialogues, video games sometimes. I mean, I've heard all of that That's in your mixes. That's my thing, yes. Yeah, where, where does that inspiration come from to do a mix? It's just, I, 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 I pretty much... It's kind of like the mix is out there. It's just waiting for me to find it. Okay. So like I'm listening to the track. So I, what I do, I listen over and over and over, and and that process sometimes takes a minute because not not all the time. All of a sudden, it comes in, or or I'm looking at a commercial, or uh, I'm on my phone scrolling, and I listened. Oh my god, this would work perfectly for my mix. Let me just add it to it. And it's it's, it's a bit of a process, but it, it it and and once it's there, it's beautiful. Like once I hear it, oh my god, this is the mix. This is how this is how I knew I wanted the mix. I just didn't know I wanted it this way. Right, right. Do you ever? Um, I know, like sometimes I'll hear a clip of something, and I'm like. I need to save that, download it and save it. I don't know where it's going to go or what it's going to go for. It's going somewhere. But I'm going to use it, right? Yes. It really, and, and you feel so great. And then when you realize where you're going to use it, you like can't stop. You're like, I have to mix I this now. I have to finish it now. Right. Yes. Oh my God. That happens to me so much whenever I'm doing mixes. It's like, I will be like three up, three in the morning and like, I got to go to bed at this, go to bed at a decent hour. I have to go to bed at a decent hour. <sighs> but I'm doing this mix a little soon. Mm -hmm. Date light comes in. I'm like, okay, I'm still working. And you just it, 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 you can't stop. It's, yeah. it's it's you have to you have it's just it's it's like popping a zit. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's it's like the satisfaction of you know realizing that it's done. It's 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 out there. Right. So yeah, I wish I was better at the technical aspect of making everything like kind of sound like one you know, one perfect level. I know how I want the story to be told, but like those technical spots, I'm like, I need to like really master this, really understand this. But I think it just takes time. But that, that knowing that story, the way like you like to tell your story. Um, and again, I know nothing about video games, but that's something you know a lot about. Yes, I've been playing video games, I think, since I was in the womb of my mom. Like, I probably had a little Sega Genesis in there or something. Well, no, back when I was born, it was Sega Master. Okay. Because I like I, like my my I think my first Christmas present ever was a Sega Master too. 
Wow. Like, and I've had, I played, I, I didn't, I was poor, so I didn't have Nintendo, but I had neighbors who had Nintendo, so I would go to their places, I would play Nintendo at their places, then came the Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. and then at some point I'm like, I want a Super Nintendo, and then my mom finally gets me a Super Nintendo, and you know what's the funny thing? Mm-hmm. I used to play this Aladdin game back in the day when I was a child, and and, and you know the the movie 1993 Aladdin, and that game was just amazing. It was just amazing, but at the same time, it was difficult. It was very punishing. You died once, you had to start over. There were some codes, but you know you don't want to cheat. You want to you want to take the whole experience and do the whole game. Funny thing, when I moved to California uh, ten years ago, uh, my friends uh, over there had a Super Nintendo, and they had that Aladdin game. First time I've ever touched that game in 20 years. I played it from the from beginning to end, not one single death. Wow. All muscle memory. Wow. So that's that's kind of like one of those things. Is that once you once you uh-huh. once once you start going, you know, you learn, you you you're on it. It's kind of it's like a gym for the brain. Let's put uh-huh. it that way. Okay. So your strategy yeah, exactly because you have to think. Like currently, I play games like Overwatch. Like you have to actually like like strategize. What are you gonna do to counter the enemy and stuff like that? So and stuff like that. So it's kind of it, it keeps you on your toes. So right. it's it's so as I said, it's a gym for the brain, and and it's 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 one of my favorite things to do when I'm not creating, when I'm not doing, when I'm not working. So, what would be the Madame Laqueer video game? That would be a shit show. Would it? Yeah, it would be a shit show. Definitely very chaotic. Mm-hmm. It would have to be. It, it would have to be chaotic. I would say it would be a. It would be a cooking game. Oh, okay. It would be a cooking game. I like this. And, at the same time, you have to battle the enemy, but the enemy are screaming kids. Okay. This is this is for the house. Is this uh, going to yeah. be for the housewife? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, okay. it would be kind of like a housewife style. You know, you you, you know, you, you you just gotta make sure like the kids are entertained. So they let you cook. Also, you gotta battle the noisy the nosy neighbor who comes in the door. And what are you doing? Do you have coffee? Like I'm cooking. Let me be. So, would the main character be? She would exactly. Be you. Yeah, the, the main character would be in the kitchen. We make sure everything's clean. We make sure that all the food is it's laid out. And she would look like you though, of oh, course. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. She would have to have the boobs out too. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. And so, she'd uh, have to have the so whole body. Yeah. So it, you know, obviously it would not be a game. Definitely not a game for kids, even though it's 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 a it's a cooking woman, but it's not for kids. Definitely okay. not for kids. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um you just hit on um when you lived in Puerto Rico and then you moved here. You've been here ten years. Ten years, yeah, this ten is years my, in this LA. is my tenth anniversary. And uh, and you're like uh, in downtown now. Yes. I don't want to say specifically LA. where. I'll just say in the region. In the region. People yes. get crazy and you'll go look for her. I'm not going to tell you where she is. <laughs> downtown <laughs> means a lot of things when you say downtown. Some people say, K. Oh, that's kind of K-Town. It's kind of the arts district. It's kind of the fashion district. But you are, in fact, in the area 10 years. Yes. I've been in South California for Southern 10 California. years. Southern California, yeah. Yes, I, I, I came in exactly on 4 20, 20, 2013. It wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. It oh, just, I think I, it was. No, it wasn't. I promise, <laughs> <laughs> I promise you it wasn't. But it, I, I, I didn't even know. When I landed here, it was, for, like, it's, it, it was like, yeah, it's 4 20. It's like, wait, what's 4 20? So, you know, it's when you, it's the day where, you, so we need a day for that? And do you, oh, you do, oh, huh? Yeah, but, but. You do. That's and I. That's why I think that's, sometimes that's part of the inspiration for your mixes because you will go on a story in those mixes. So well, that's got to help inspire you. Funny thing, I I used to do mixes before I smoked weed. So okay. they, they they I feel like a weed for me is more recreational and sometimes it makes me slower. So that's why I don't mm, I, okay. I don't I don't I don't particularly mix when I'm when I'm high. Really? But sometimes it helps. Sometimes it helps. That's it, all you with a clear head. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 clear head. Uh, uh, it, yeah, it, pretty much the, the music is auto, the music in my head is automatic. It's not cost. Can we get induced. some fly in some weed for Madame so that we can get her high? <laughs> and then see what the mix sounds like because <laughs> I'm telling you those, those mixes I only perform them once and all of a sudden I, I listen to them I'm like nah what am I going to do I'm not going to do them again yeah yeah that's so funny um, we were off camera talking about the fact that you uh, live in an area where sometimes like in the Long Beach area as well limited parking and so you can have the option in Southern California in a lot of areas to purchase parking uh, and then it ends up being anywhere from uh, 150 300 dollars sometimes <gasps> a month. Yeah, that's pricey. That's Gosh, yeah. everything is so expensive anymore. And, I, and what what about waiting lists? Like you have a waiting list for a parking for a parking yeah. lot, and then when once you make it to the parking lot, once once it makes it to your name, 
is what three hundred, four hundred dollars a month. Right. Fuck off. Right. So do you um you currently park where? I park like three blocks away. Like I have to force myself to do cardio. If if I'm gonna if I'm gonna move my car, I have to know like okay, bitch, you're gonna car. You put your headsets on. Keep walking straight. Do not look at anybody. Wow. Just keep walking. And, you know, the interesting thing about that for anybody that's from somewhere else that doesn't experience this, um, that doesn't mean that she's parking somewhere that is that she doesn't have to pay for. She still has to pay for that. Oh, yeah. It's a little less, but it's not really. It's, 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 a, it's yeah. a huge bill. And that's everybody in L.A. and Southern California. I mean, unless you're further out, like where I live, obviously, I'm, I'm off the beaten path, so I don't have that. But anybody anywhere closer to where the life is happening has to fucking eat that cost. It's gross. And everything's expensive right now, especially. Everything's very pricey. Yeah. In particular, in particular in highly populated areas where yeah. there's also like touristic, you know, where there's uh, tourist traffic. Right. So every, all prices are going to bump up. Like even I walk into the Pollo Loco in a downtown area and I'm like $17 for a salad. It's like the fuck? Yeah. That's what I'm Sorry. saying. I'll That's- make my own. That's what we have to do. I'm yeah. not going to make my own, though, but uh, <laughs> I am going to go to break. You know, I cooked last night. I, I, I cooked last night, and I was, think, and I was thinking, I should, bring Delta, I should bring Delta something. But this, I heard your, I heard the episode that you don't do home cook from anybody. You're, no, you're, I do. Just strangers. Okay. Strangers. You're not a stranger. Okay. Okay. Then I, I should have. Damn it. I should have. I made some arroz con gandules last See, night. See, that's which what I'm a, talking about. It's, it's a Puerto Rican. It's a Puerto Rican dish, and it's and I just and my 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 best friend just gave me some sofrito, mm. some sofrito. It's like it's, it's kind of like the heart of Puerto Rican seasoning. Right. So I made some last night. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna bring in a little container and have her judge my cooking. Oh, I wouldn't judge it. I would devour it. I would <laughs> devour it. I love that. Let's take a break. And we are back with my good friend, Madame LaQueer. Yeah. It's Halloween. Um, I'm curious, what scares you? Hmm. What scares me? And it doesn't have to be a horror film. It could be just someone's behavior. It could be somebody clipping their toenails in public. I mean, it could be anything that's just scares Ew. the shit out of you. Maybe oh, that I... disgusts you. It doesn't scare you. It could okay. be different. Okay. Um, what scares me? Um, okay. So... Oh, I'm gonna tell you what scares me. Uh, kids at pool. Uh, ki- kids at a pool scare uh-huh. me. Yeah, that that's scary that. to me. Um, scaring to me is people having a full on conversation at the deli section at the grocery store where all the food is already laid out. Uh-huh. But they're like right next to the food and the food is already open and I'm hungry and I'm gonna go for probably that that yellow rice and that tandu tandoori chicken and. There's people having a conversation right in front of that food. Like, baby, could you please move away? Right. So your essence doesn't fall on the food. I lo- I never thought of it phrased that way. Your essence. That's a nice way to say it. Yes. You mean your nice funk, way. your breath, your spit. <laughs> people are farting. It's just <laughs> gross. It's just gross. Oh, my God. No. That- <laughs> and let's look at the, 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 because I've seen it with my own eyes. Right, like, like the 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 random just kid and I'm like, oh my god, I love that. Uh huh. It's gross. So that scares you, but yeah. But what about what do you love like re- about grandmas? Because oh. I know this is something for you. I know this is a subject. Yeah, that- that's my yeah, that's my thing. Like I I was raised by my grandma. Uh huh. So my my grandma took care of me. Like, I think if if it wasn't for my grandma, I would have ended up in in dead gangs or dead. Oh. So um, she she's so it's it's kind of like I I I I see when I whenever I meet an, an elderly lady that re, that has that warm feeling like I can easily connect it to like I I remember I I worked at um what I worked at can I say it the mm, store yeah I worked at a CVS in a beauty department you did and, I remember that yeah uh, in Orange County I worked at different stores and most of my customers um were were ladies that could have been my grandma. Mm-hmm. In in real life, and that helped. It, I connected with them so so easily, and it was, it was this thing. It's it's just it's like it's like instant love. Like I love my grandma, so I can love anybody's grandma pretty much. Right. So um, it's like the home meat. It's like the home cooked meal. Right. It's like the conversations. Comforting. They're, they're, they're thrilled to see you, 
and it's 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 always joyful because at the same time most of them and let's put it this way all of them are just are retired right right so once you're retired you got nothing nothing better to do uh, as in your time is well it's better spent right by things that matter most other than work mm -hmm. so for them the essence of life is not working and making money and the rush is just having a good time right. have you eaten are you okay do you need so it's 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 that caring is that compassion and that warmth that just you know like a moth i'm attracted to it i love that i love that do you love grandmas as much as you love marijuana i say they're right there yeah they're right there they're very similar they're very similar they they both bring you warmth they feed you if you're hungry mm -hmm. um and you know it's 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 even even your parents loved mar even your parents loved marijuana and loved your grandmother so they're right. both loved by my parents. <laughs> you really found a way to clean that up. I like that. I well, like that. Not that it had to be cleaned up. Oh well, yeah, you know my, what I'm my, my parents were potheads before I was born, so that's why I can say that. Yeah, my parents too. My yeah. parents too. I think it's just generational. Not while I was born. Like they didn't actually. Well, I was. Well, I think that my dad told my dad told me that he quit while well after I was born, but before. Uh -huh. Hands down. So while your mother was pregnant, you don't think she was getting high at all? I'm not sure. I, I don't think my mother would have directly admit it, admitted that mm -hmm. to me. But um, I know my dad did. And mm -hmm. I remember the smell. Okay, this is this is the thing. I didn't smoke weed until like I was I was about like 26, 27 years old. Like I mm -hmm. never tried it. I was very I was very like, oh, no on drugs. I wouldn't do this or do that. Like I I, I tried it, you know, and, they, and and I thank my grandmother for that because my grandmother made sure I stayed, you know, like say no to drugs, you know, go to go to bed at 9 p.m. I, I mean, I don't go to bed at 9 p.m. to this day. But anyways, um, it's it, it, it helped, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like I made a conscious decision as an adult. I want to try marijuana. Mm -hmm. And I tried it. I tried it and I loved it. Yeah. And yeah. And Everybody loves it for different reasons. I feel like um, as the years progress, I feel like when I smell weed, like I, I don't know if it's just because it's grown so many different places and there's so many different kinds. But whenever I'm somewhere and I smell it, sometimes I'm like, oh, that smells like dirt weed. Like, is that? Is that good? Like, do pe are people oh, enjoying it? Oh, yeah, you got it? cheap weed. You yeah, like sometimes yeah. you smell it and it's like skunk good, ass. Good, good weed. Oh, well, I like I like the cheesy skunky. That's just my pre my preference, you know. There, there's, cheesy there's, skunky. Yeah, there's there's different types of smells because it depends mm -hmm. on the type of weed. There's there's more fruity, more cheesy, more. And there's like the skunky, cheesy skunky. So, so I, I remember that first time I was in California, like, oh, my God, somebody has a tree farm around here. My friend, no, that was a skunk. So that's like, what I'm saying. I, I'm just used to like something that smells like beautifully herbal. Like that's what I remember as a so kid. You like the fruity more. The, I get, the, I mean, the, I don't smoke weed, but I, I, I'm hold space for everybody that does. And I think, okay. I don't think of it obviously as a drug because I feel like it's coming from the earth. It's wonderful people. And it has so many healing properties. For How do you so many think people. our ancestors communicated in the past? Right. You know? Right. So they're like, for example, and, um, at least for for my behalf, like the cacique in Puerto Rico from the Tainos, mm -hmm. they used to they used to like the elders from the tribe. They used to smoke right. in a large pipe from an unknown leaf that would grow on the, you know, in the area. And everybody would just assume it was tobacco. It's like, no, nah, it's not tobacco. It's fucking weed. Right. I bet you it was weed. Right. I wonder how they yeah. think the elderly spelled to them. You know, it's it's it's, it's all about experience. Do you um do you speak differently um when you smoke a peace pipe? <sighs> my English, uh, not my English. My accent just gets thicker. Uh, which I love. I think your <laughs> accent is stunning. It's so beautiful. I get more chatty. I I, oh, I get very chatty, loud, loud, mm -hmm. and my accent just gets thicker. I love that. I think there's something about you that a lot of people don't really know, and that is that you, uh, in the past few years, have had um, more of an interest in filmmaking. Yes. Right. Yes. I've. I've. Well, I've not in the past few years. I, to be quite honest, I've always wanted to be in, okay. in the film, like even as an actor. Because when I was a kid, my dream was I wanted to become an actor, but you know, drag just happened to found to find me, and I took it. I was like, you know what, this will do. 
Sure. So, but I wanted to, I, I, and at this point, you know, and basically set the side to be in front of the cameras that, you know, you know, decided to throw out there your star potential. Mm -hmm. And right now I stumbled into film and I feel like it's a great avenue to also be creative, to employ all the skill sets that I've learned throughout mm, my career. This and is drag. so true all the connections I've made. And I think that this is, I think this is a great opportunity to branch out and, and, you know, and also elevate, not me, but my community, mm -hmm. elevate other drag queens. And if, if, it, if this gives me an opportunity to create and bring more people together, that's what I want to do. Yeah, and you were recently working on a, a short film, yes? Yes, I did. Tell us. Daddy by Second Act Films. Um, I I worked on that film since the early early stages of the film and during the casting, the signing, and then I also I happened to be uh, in the film. So I I, I play. Uh, it's it's if I if I were to give you a, a quick synopsis of sure. the of the story is a um, uh, gay young man falls in love with the daddy and gets heartbroken. So mm. it's it kind of tell it it turns into it's it's a gay fatal attraction. Oh, okay. So we're looking for a thriller. It's like it's queer horror, pretty much. So, I'm on board. I so love it, this. So it's it's the bloody, the messy, and and you know we we haven't had a a, a, a gay killer in, in a minute. So we have a gay killer now in the film. Okay. And okay. It's fun. It's it's just a fun. It's a fun. It's a fun short film. It was very very nice to make. I played Cece, uh, the killer's roommate slash best friend. Okay. Um. And it was a very interesting, it was very interesting experience working with experienced actors because sure. even though I'm experienced on the stage and I'm what they and they they called me a natural, like they're like you're what you call we call a natural, like even though you don't have the right training, but you can do this because mm -hmm. and and I feel and I feel very good like when I saw the footage, like oh my god, I can act. That's so cool. <laughs> well, and you just said like incorporating all the things that you know, and this isn't your first time um, working on a film because you've worked in several different aspects, including that Christmas movie, the Wow Christmas movie. Yeah, and I know you worked behind the scenes. I did behind the scenes for the the bitch who stole Christmas. Yep. Yes. Oh my God. I was I was brought in by a dear friend who he found me performing at the Abbey, and he's like, Oh my God, I need you for this film. Let's get you in. You make your own stuff. Like, okay, perfect. Bring your sewing machine. We need you in. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm in. And and they sequestered me for three weeks, and and I I loved it. It was a great yeah. experience. And a great. It was just like a fun movie. It really showcased a lot of different people. But again, it's another example of. Um, I feel like. People who um, are able to work a long time in what we do are people who know a little bit about sewing, about makeup, about hair, about uh, modeling, about acting, producing. Um, just as we were even talking about mixes, you know, I, going back to that, I think it's really um, it showcases when somebody can make a mix, even if they don't know the technical aspects, they could possibly learn that. But telling a story in five minutes or, or showcasing, uh, highlighting just the important parts. You know, I, w when you make a mix, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I need all five minutes of this dialogue. And you're like, people are going to listen to about 30 seconds of that broken apart. <laughs> you have to find the best part. And you're like, it's all the best part. But you have to figure it out. And that's what that's what's so great yeah. about you're working on uh, the film in front of the camera, also being there for casting, then working on like previously on the Christmas movie. You are showcasing all the stuff that you do. I am. You love and that? I, I'm 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 living. That's 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 one of the main reasons I also came to California. Yeah. Because I wanted I wanted to branch out of just being in uh, being a drag queen. I wanted to maybe have more of a creative outlet. Sure. And what better than, you know, Los Angeles, LA, Hollywood, the movie industry. This is amazing. It's a wonderful world. There's different opportunities to create, to create content, to create stories, and you know, and let the world you let the world know your craft. I love it. I love it. Let's take a break. We are back, and we've just realized that Madame did not bring a joint. And um, I could have. We are in the smoking section. <laughs> <laughs> We're technically this part is the smoking section of the restaurant, and and, and, um, and it's perfect. They would have it would it would have gone perfect with, with the Halloween decoration. Yeah. There I go hitting the microphone again. Um, it could have gone perfectly with the Halloween decoration to create a smog effect. Yeah, I think it would have been nice. Oh, it would have been shit. nice. Um, 
It's time to open letters from the very Delta listeners yeah. and viewers. Let's see. Uh, in a segment we call Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta. Um, if you'd like to send a letter uh, with questions or queries or um, mild observations, you know, don't get crazy, you can send them to readmedelta at gmail.com. Um, the first letter is here in the beautiful Luar bag. Oh, my gosh. It's a it's a ghost peep. Do you know what peeps are? Is that marshmallow? Yeah. Oh. Mm. That's my, my favorite ingredient. I hate peeps, but I love marshmallow. Yeah. So this one is probably doesn't have, like, the sugar coating on it. Okay. Yeah. I, so. I, I would probably like that versus a peep. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, no shame to those who like the peeps, but right. peeps are gross. Yeah. I um I actually my favorite ingredient in any candy is marshmallow. I love marshmallow. Um, oh yeah. I'm gonna put this here so everyone can see how cute it is. I used to devour marshmallow by the bag. Oh kid. my gosh, that's the oh. best. I want to put five of them in my <laughs> mouth, and then I want to like like the, that. Like the, oh. Right? I wonder, oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, let me see. <laughs> I'm going to taste this one, and I'm going to let you know. This is a little ghost candy. Oh, it does have the sugar on the outside. It tastes like peeps? It tastes like a peep. Mm. I would eat it. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. <laughs> Hold on. You have to cut the sugar with a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's the only mm. way to do it. Only way to do it. Okay. If you're, not, if you're not doing Diet Coke, what are you doing? And what are you doing, right? Exactly. Dear Very Delta, what foods shouldn't people eat on airplanes? Do you have any personal stories? Egg salad stories? Thank you for choosing my letter. My self-esteem could really use this right now. None of my t-shirts fit. I don't like any of my music, and I'm supposed to stop using food emotionally. All I do is stream the Barbie movie and make up drag names that I'll never use. I did have a good meal with my aunt. I'm close with her, and she was visiting. Thanks. Genesis P. Orangina. That's her name. That's a long name. That's a good one, though. Genesis? Mm -hmm. Cool, Genesis. I like that name. Yeah. Do you have any uh, foods that you think people shouldn't be eating on an airplane or personal stories? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, 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 mind the dairy right before an airplane, like, no mm -hmm. lasagna, mm -hmm. nothing too cheesy. I don't know why people think pizza is a good food to stuff your face with before a, before a flight, you mm -hmm. know? Because. I'm telling you, when you fart inside a plane, that fart ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's not. Well, you're in a chair in the middle of the air, you know, it's just not good. Yeah. Have you seen those those suggestions that they're saying to like make more room on an airplane where they stagger the seats? So they're gonna they're talking about making it where a seat is here. And then the other seat kind of overlaps like this, so the person's butt is completely in your it's, face. Yeah, you get you get their butt crack. You get everything mm -hmm. that comes out of their butt crack, it comes right to your face. Right. Their life, their story, their day, anything. Right. You'll know what they you know what they just ate. If it yeah. was broccoli, if it was cheese, yes. Yeah. So you're saying um, not something that's going to go through you and cause a problem yes, on the plane. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think for me, it's really. Um, uh, anything like brought on the plane that is really strong in a smell. And, you know, I, I love all kinds of food. I want Mexican food. I want Chinese food. I want a Subway sandwich. I like it all. But I feel like when you're contained that way, it doesn't really matter what you bring. It's going to stay in oh. the little capsule that's floating through the air, right? But I have a worse one for you. Okay, what is it? Um, a mom changing a diaper inside oh, of an aircraft. That doesn't taste good okay. at all. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I remember I was, it was, I, I vividly, I was in the aisle seat and, and all of a sudden I was like, I could smell the poop on my face. Right. Like it was like, and I yearly just say out loud, unfiltered, oh my God, it smells like shit. And then the little kid behind me, it. I'm sorry. <gasps> he smelled it. Oh my God. And then it was like, that was so cute that even it smelled like when even if it smelled like shit, I was gonna like, okay, you're fine, buddy. Don't worry. Just you felt bad. Yeah, because you're a bitch. Yeah, I felt bad. You know, what can I say? But so, sometimes, sometimes I feel bad about being right. a bitch. But there, there's parts that you sometimes you gotta be unapologetic about it. When you get on a plane and uh, say your flight's gonna be three hours, three hours or more, do you take snacks on the plane or do you like to buy oh, things? On oh no, I'll take snacks. I'll I'll buy snacks at home. But we're frugal. We're, uh -huh. we're we're frugal. Like I'm I'm not about to give the airport seven dollars for a fucking snack. Okay. Like okay. I'll buy I'll spend four dollars on a box of whatever signature brand I can get protein snacks, and I'll and I'll keep them in my carry on. I'll keep mm -hmm. two three, and then if I'm hungry, I'll snack. 
I mean, I'll, 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 I'll get over the peanut dark chocolate real quick, but mm -hmm. at least I have something and I'm not spending $28. This part of you, this mom part of you is coming out again, which I like. It's in the video game. It's in the airplane. There's something about you. You love grandmas. So there's like this motherly thing that I don't think people know about you. This wise thing. I like it. I like it. I never, Thank my I grandma never for knew, that. I, I, I never knew that about. She you. was an economy teacher, so yeah. she was very, very um, adamant with economy. Uh -huh. Everything had to economize. Like when we bought a yogurt, Smart. When, yeah, when we bought yogurt, she wouldn't throw out the cups. She would rinse them and keep them. This is what you brush your teeth with. Mm -hmm. um, always saving the extra portions, never throwing food away. Mm -hmm. you, I would rather share with the neighbor. If somebody comes visit, I'll cook more. Oh, that's my mentality with my Puerto Rican. And this, I think it's a Puerto Rican thing in general. Okay. We like cooking a lot. Uh -huh. Like when we cook, we cook like for multiple servings. Right. And if we have to save it, we save it. So, Smart. Yeah. And, Smart. And, like I have some, I have some rice con gandule waiting for me when I when I get mm, home because of that. It's waiting for me, actually. It's waiting for me because I'm. <laughs> we're not far. We're not far from your home. Okay, so, you you're know. more than welcome. I have I have enough for two. I love it. I have I enough it. for two. Um, we have another letter. Yeah. Uh, where's that other letter? Oh, here it is. We're flying that in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Halloweeny. Boo. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Um, keep going. This one has, this is an unidentified letter because there's no um, candy or anything on it. So we'll put that over there. Hmm. Okay. Oh, this is a long one. Jesus. Okay. Dearest Delta and legendary guest. I recently found out that Chuck E. Cheese filed for bankruptcy and will begin closing some locations. I feel in my essence that a Chuck E. Cheese salad bar is very Delta. It's basic, but it hits correct. I imagine you there early in the 90s with baby Ozma celebrating her, her fifth birthday. She runs around giving tarot card readings for Chuck E. Cheese tickets, <laughs> and you're sitting in a booth with your husband's family. You're wearing a cropped Spuds McKenzie t-shirt that you won at a wet t-shirt contest in Rosarito, tight, dark, indigo acid wash jeans with zippers behind your calves and white and pink glittered LA gear sneakers with ankle pom-pom socks. Your hair is long blonde with spiral curls held in place with mousse and pulled back into a large banana clip. Your hair and body is sprayed with exclamation perfume, leaving a sweet scent as you pass the drunk fathers drinking beer on tap inside the booths leading to the salad bar. Tears for Fears Head Over Feet is playing as you walk by and they watch you noticing them. You get to the salad bar and look around, spotting Ozma in her navy blue white collared sailor dress holding bundles of tickets in both hands. You feel safe to make your salad now. Chopped lettuce, chopped iceberg lettuce, cherry tomatoes, red onions, olives, cucumbers, shredded cheese, bacon bits and croutons. You walk back to your booth with a dry salad, sit and pull out a Ken's light raspberry walnut vinaigrette out of your uh, Esprit purse. Delta, is this correct? Do you love a Chuck E. Cheese salad bar? Love you always, Jose La Berja. <laughs> We wait uh, for these letters. I, okay, I'm living for all the detail, like not the banana clip and not like exactly right. the, the description, exactly what you're going to have on your hair, how you're going to smell. Like, baby, uh, 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 Jose, I think you should be a writer. You should, you should, you should do some fucking writing because that was detailed, that was detailed and precise. And it's so true. I tell Jose all the time, I'm like, you should just be on Cameo because people would want to hear these descriptions. He can describe. He can describe any woman, but it's really specific regionally. It's specific to the city. It's like he will describe um, what somebody's 32-year-old mom would be doing 10 years ago, but what she's doing now. Like he knows the specificities. And and in detail, I I, 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 I can see the attention. He's, he's the best. He's the best. Um, he uh, is right, though. A Chuck E. Cheese salad bar is bomb. I love any fucking salad bar um but uh, unpopular opinion i've said it before i will stand behind it whether people like me or not if this if i lose support that's okay i'm putting raisins on my salad i love <laughs> raisins on my salad i love raisins cashews and also yes. cran the cranberry ones what kind of dressing do you like on a salad um i like i'm diverse on that i can do any ex but i like him like like i like ranch 
Duh, yeah, it's a go-to. It's a yeah, go-to. go-to. Simple. Um, people are gonna hate. I do like my blue cheese. Me too. I like my blue cheese. Me too. And but I would say my favorite is um, like it like Italian, but like the, the, when when it's mixed with ranch. Mm. Also, pollo loco. Uh, okay, let, let me. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with very specific. Okay, pollo loco you, has. You have to be specific. My favorite dressing I've ever tasted, and I think anybody will rival it. Their cilantro dressing. It's good. It's like it's off good. the fucking charts. It's like I'll good. order whatever. And I'll be like, can I have some cilantro dressing? Like, like give me a churro. Yeah, can I have some cilantro dressing to go with it? You know? Uh huh. I'll order anything with cilantro dressing at pollo loco. I love el pollo loco, but sometimes I wonder, like, where are the chickens coming from? Because sometimes those legs are little. <laughs> Why are those legs so small? You know what I think it is? I think because they're real chickens, right? Whereas real KFC chickens, is yes. like KFC is like chickens that are bred for a certain way, so they like they don't even move and they just grow and it's sad. Yeah. But that chicken at El Pollo Loco, it hits. It's so good. Oh yeah, pollo is, loco is. What's what your I, order? What do you want from a pollo I, I would. I wish I would have had pollo loco as a kid, but unfortunately, I had fucking KFC. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, pollo loco! I I always oh, I, I either order the chi, the the tinga burrito or the double chicken avocado. The chingao salad. burrito. T- double double tinga no uh, double avocado tinga burrito something like that. Always with avocado. Oh, that sounds always Hawaiian. That's something but else. But my favorite is the double chicken avocado salad. Okay. It's a salad, but it's it's but I I, I and, and and this is one thing. Oh, I oh I'm gonna. Where's my Karen wig? I gotta put my Karen wig on. Do it. Pollo That's your loco. camera right there. Let them know. Pollo that loco. I have to. T- I have a bone to pick with you. Why the fuck would you discontinue the black beans? I support you in this. The black beans. How fucking dare you? They were the best thing that you ever had at Pollo Loco. And all of a sudden, you out of the fucking nowhere. Nobody said anything. Nobody complained about the black beans. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're just going to take him off. Mm -hmm. Because, bitch, no. Dumb move. Stupid move. Bring back the black beans. If you can't get the ingredients, figure it out. You know why they did that, I think? I, I think they play buying, they play mind games, all of these places. And I think because El Pollo Loco is... um, essentially uh, centered in the idea of Mexican cuisine. They were using the black beans to lure in um, Puerto Rican and Cuban it customers. <laughs> and they got them in there and then they disrespected you. They disrespected and they said, me. all you get are pinto beans. Oh. And I think it was a game that they were playing and it's fucked up. It's messed up. Stop playing fucking games, Pollo Loco. Yeah, it's rude. Bring back the black beans. It's, this is, El Pollo Loco is really uniting us because, you know, I'm Mexican, you are Puerto Rican, but together we can meet under one place exactly. and enjoy the same food. And but then they disrespected you. And when you disrespect one person, you disrespect all, all of us. Of them. Do you all know what I'm them. saying? So yes. I can stand with Puerto Ricans, I can stand with Cubans, I can stand with anyone when that disrespect comes because we're all brown yes. in the sunlight. And I speak for all Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Latinos you do. around the world when I say not having black beans is fucked up. Habichuelas, 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 habichuelas. I'm just doing that so your boobs jump up and down. I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to make my boob jumps. Sometimes yeah. I like it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Do people tell you you look like Lainey Kazan? Lainey Kazan. Who's Lainey Kazan? She's an actress. Just look her up sometime. It just okay. in certain instances, you like if they were doing the life story of Lainey Kazan, you would absolutely be cast as Lainey Kazan. She's gorgeous. She's fierce. She's mostly from the 80s. That's where people know her. Gorgeous, like big hair, sexy body, boobs, attitude, kind. Lainey Kazan. But was she crazy as fuck? Crazy as fuck. Okay, we both. Oh my gosh, probably high too. <laughs> but fierce, absolutely fierce. I love that. I love, love, love that. This was super fun. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I love this. Um, I'm absolutely going to your home as soon as this is over to go. Yes. I'm going to bring a margarine tub that I washed out myself because we do the same thing. <laughs> Our families do the same thing. It is it is a thing across the board. It's a thing. You never know what you're going to open up and you're like, oh, this is a butter container. It's spaghetti. No, it's not. <laughs> this is a butter container. No, it's not. It's pork. You never know what it's going to be, right? It's like a little surprise. It's, it is it's, a surprise. It's like a, little, it's like a little homemade Christmas for yourself. Or like the, the cookie tin and you open it up and it's sewing stuff. Oh my God! Yes, my grandmother had so many of those. She would buy those cookies, but she would eat them slowly. But uh-huh. at the same time, whenever it was done, do not throw the tin can out. I need that for because she used to. My grandmother was a seamstress. Okay, so she was she, like she was like my first glance at ever a sure. sewing machine. Sure. So like I remember seeing those little cans stacked. 
That's so funny. It's so true. It happens in all of our families, I think. Across the board, I think that's something that that unites everyone's family, no matter if you're in the middle of Utah, Southern California, probably even, I don't know, in the middle of Puerto Rico. Yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. And when you're bored and you have those nice cookies with you, so you just want to, like, chow down and eat it yeah. all, like, like, like with the marshmallow. Yeah. And then you open it up and there's no cookies in there. No, nope. like, sewing I ate them. Thank you all so much for listening and watching Very Delta. We come out every Monday. Subscribe to Mom Podcast right here yes. on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel so you do not miss an episode. And search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps. And subscribe to Mom Plus for even more Very Delta. You can send all your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. Where can people find you on social media? They can find me at Instagram at Madame Laqueer. They can find me on TikTok. I just re I just opened it. The real Madame Laqueer. Um, they can find me on Thread and Twitter at Madame Laqueer. And they can find me on Venmo, on Sale, on Cash Up as well. Yeah. At Madame Laqueer. And do you do cameo as well? I do cameo at yeah. Madame Laqueer. Yeah. That's so correct. if you want a personalized video from Madame wishing someone a happy birthday or uh, a pep talk or whatever, check her out on cameo because that's the best way to get that personal um, attention. Personal touch. Yes. You can also follow the show on Instagram at TikTok or, and TikTok at Very Delta because if you're not, you're really only getting half the Delta. Join me right here next week. And until then, make sure you keep things very scary, Delta. Boo. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 